This is the Global Broadcasting Service, serving remote outposts since 1928. Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World Express Monorail. Caramba, we have something really big for you today. Welcome, foolish mortals. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. This is the DBC Pod with Phil Schoen and Jason Dodge. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's pod. This is the show for the week of August 28th, 2023. On this show, we're going to talk about our initial thoughts about Ahsoka, so we don't have an actual episode, though Phil messaged me on vacation. Hey, you want to do recording tonight? And I was like, yes, I do. And then we didn't do it. And then it didn't happen. You know, it didn't happen. Um, also, if you are watching, you can see me in my unshaven face because I was on vacation. Just got back last night, and uh, we're going to talk about that later. It was a vacation vacation. I did not have to find the vacation the vacation because <laughs> I was on it. Um, we're also going to play uh, Rank the Attractions because uh, the Disney Parks blog put out a bunch of cool things that are coming to um, Disney Sea over there in Japan. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about that. Uh, reminder for our social media accounts, Twitter on X, Insta, Threads, Facebook, or YouTube channel is at the DBC pod everywhere. And if you're watching, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Leave a comment. More importantly, the algorithm likes that and helps us find new viewers um, at all times. And of course, the Discord server where everybody has fun and chats. Um, I, we want to welcome a new member. I believe it's WLB1027. Welcome to the family. Uh, and uh, join the conversation. All right, Phil. Um, this is a very special episode. Only because you're going to Disney World in two days. We're also recording on Friday night. Yep. Though you guys don't need to know that because this show's still going <laughs> to come out on Monday anyway. Um, but, Phil, you've got, you know, normally we ask what's going on in your Disney World. Well, of course, you're going to be at Disney World very soon. So um, you wanted to talk about some last minute stuff. So what's been on your mind um, as you're about to leave in, within 48 hours? Yeah, so obviously a lot of final prep, and I thought I could just go over, you know, a reminder to, to all our listeners about kind of what our trip looks like. And I thought I'd also mention a slight schedule change that we're having, because partly because, you know, we can't leave good enough alone, but also no. this is for a fun reason. Um, so as a quick reminder, we are heading down on, on Sunday, the 27th, and we'll head back on Saturday, September 6th, or September 2nd, sorry, we'll be there for six nights. Um, five full days in the middle. We are doing one day at each park. And then on our off day, we're also doing the Halloween party. Um, so what has changed to that schedule? Um, we flip flopped which days we're going to be doing Hollywood Studios versus Epcot. Epcot is now going to be our last full day on September 1st. And the reason for that is a very kind cast member reached out to me and mentioned that she would like my family and me to be their guests for their cast member preview at journey of water inspired by Dancing. Moana. Dancing. So the first one of those is on that Friday, the first, so we'll be one of the first few people to get in there. And I believe that's the first day that you're allowed to post on social media from inside and stuff like that. So definitely be following our socials on Friday. If nothing else, I'll be probably posting a lot of fun videos and images and, maybe something with our initial reviews and stuff like that. But obviously we'll be talking about it a lot on our next episode. So that's one big change that happened. And well, of, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. Does it count that uh, me being right saying that you will get a chance to go see journey of war? I mean, great. Yeah. <laughs> great that you're going because a cast member was kind enough to bring you as their guest, not because it's open to the public, but does my prediction still count? I, I think know. you can, take credit for it sure you didn't specify 80%? how i would get it <laughs> <laughs> that's true true i just say you I will mean, definitely I, get to see it if i was scaling the, the walls to get in or something like that it still counts <laughs> um, but you get to see it which is awesome yeah awesome. very excited um, for that so what did you have to change because of this this is yeah so we did have fortunately we didn't have too many things to change but we did have a couple things uh we had our like brunch adr at um uh uh, garden grill which we were able to replace basically same time um no problem we were able to switch up the date for our behind the seeds tour and we were able to flip-flop the other way we had a late adr at oga's cantina for late at night in hollywood studios and i was able to 
you know, make all those changes, no problem. So I guess that's probably another sign that hopefully things won't be too crowded. The fact that none, yeah. of, yeah, none of those were hard to make kind of, you know, last minute. So, uh, what so was it wasn't the, too bad. What was the order of your parks before and after? You sw- yep. It sounds like you switched Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Correct. Yeah. So we were going to do, so uh, Monday, our first full day is uh, Magic Kingdom. That'll be a full Magic Kingdom day, probably with a break in the middle. Second day is our party day. So we're not doing a park in the morning. We'll just be sleeping in and resting um, and you know, pool time, maybe Disney Springs. And then we'll go over to the party. We can get into Magic Kingdom for the party at 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. Then Wednesday was going to be Epcot. It's now Hollywood Studios. Thursday is Animal Kingdom. And then Friday is now Epcot. That was going to be Hollywood Studios. So we just flip flopped those. I, I, I think that's better in this way. I mean, I think finishing your trip at Epcot is probably yeah, the, better. It was right honestly now. a debate I was going back and forth with anyway. One reason we weren't going to do that is just because that makes it a Friday with food and wine in the evening of Labor Day weekend. We didn't know if it might get a little crowded from locals Mm -hmm. then. That was kind of the reason we didn't do it, but I was debating doing it that way anyway. So this was, I guess it was meant to be. It definitely meant to be. I mean, like I don't, you don't want to end as much as I love Fantasmic. You don't want to end your day at Hollywood studios, especially this time of year where there's going to be like your typical afternoon thunderstorm and it gets all steamy. And then, cause I've been in Hollywood studios during a storm and it's like, you find, you get your margarita and you find a windowsill that yeah. you can kind of perch in and you just kind of hang out, which is nice, but you don't want to do that the last day that you're sure. there. Right. So I, I think, I think this yeah, is this definitely is not upset idea. to uh, end the trip on Epcot and watching Epcot forever and stuff like that. So it's definitely won't be a bad way to, to end the trip. So, um, for me, you might, you might be talking about this later on, but on your party day, have you figured out what you're doing as soon as you're able to go through the turnstiles at four o'clock? Cause I know you're talking about that in discord. So party not, strat. yeah, not a hundred percent. I think we'll go in and kind of figure out if there were any rides that we didn't get to the day before. Cause as of now, the plan is to not get genie plus. So there might be some rides okay. kind of during that four to six, you know, kind of before the party starts. You can usually get in a couple of rides. I've been reading some of touring plans, guides, and kind of expected wait times during that time. So that's probably what we'll do. We have also been talking about, do we want to wait in one of those lines early for one of the rare characters that can get pretty long? Um, and we think we've settled on wanting to see Elvis Stitch because Ooh, okay. it's a, a fairly rare character, but it's also not it, not one that gets like three hour long line. Like Jack, like and, Jack Sally and Sally, can. right? So supposedly, I think if we get online for there about six o'clock ish, he usually starts meeting at like six thirty. We should probably be done by like seven or so from that meet. So that's kind that's... of I, th- I think what we're willing to do because hopefully then, basically we're done with that meet as the the real party time starts. Yeah, I mean that doesn't seem too bad. You know, my wife and I are still thinking about the Christmas trip that we're, we're thinking about planning. Um, I haven't booked anything yet. I'm st- I'm kind of like. Well, we'll talk about this later. But <laughs> one of the things are is basically um, your party day. You can easily spend the whole party waiting in character meet and greet lines. Exactly, where for sure. You don't want to do that. I mean, I want to watch shows and eat snacks and go on a few rides that you weren't able to go on, like like you're doing, right? Like yeah. I, I agree with your strategy plan. Yeah, and then we'll figure out. You know, there's a couple of rides that have overlays that we definitely want to do, and then we'll want to get in kind of the hub area or Main Street for the main entertainment once it starts i still we'll play it by ear if we're going to watch the first parade or the second one um but we'll figure it out and then there's definitely some of the special treats we want to you know at the, the food that we want to try towards the end of the night we'll probably do some trick-or-treating and so we're trying to get a little bit of everything in but i think the main thing is a lot of the entertainment the parade the show the fireworks and stuff like that so we're kind of fitting everything else in around that i'm really curious to see how your day is going to go without genie plus the day before yeah and uh, how much of that Genie Plus money goes to just sugar the next day, <laughs> like all the snacks that you're, I'm, I'm thinking point. that you guys are going to be getting. Um, you got a point here that you're still debating versus overthinking. Yeah, so I think. Is, and that, what does that mean? So I think the main one is Genie Plus. Um, do we want to get it specifically for the Magic Kingdom Day? I think we're pretty set. We're definitely going to get it on our Hollywood Studios and Epcot days because we we're going to sleep in a little, you know, do the whole hmm. sleep in and stack for those two. And then we're definitely not going to get it for Animal Kingdom just because we don't think it's worth it. Um, but for Magic Kingdom, it's the most expensive. So we would obviously save money by not getting it. But there's obviously you get a lot of use out of it. 
our thinking is we were just there in December. We got on a lot of stuff then. So if we don't get on everything now, it's not the end of the world. Sure. If there are one or two things we wanted to do, we don't get on, we could do it during the party. And we know we're going to pay for Tron. So we're already paying for that. So we don't really necessarily want to pay for Tron and Genie Plus. But that's why I'm saying I'm debating over thinking morning of, do I just panic and Oh, you, you, you definitely like are. <laughs> you definitely are. I mean, like so, you're gonna and, you're gonna get FOMO of like yeah. you don't have any. But you're gonna wake up in a cold sweat at six fifty five because you did not set an alarm, and like <laughs> your hand is like you're gonna be half awake and your hands are gonna be hitting like button scrolling, but like without a phone in your yeah. hand. Well, we'll be up sleep. that time for all the Tron virtual queue and whatnot anyway. But ah, that's true. It's just to that's uh, true. My, my wife said she's like, no, we're definitely not getting in stuff like that. So hopefully she'll win out in my. <laughs> <laughs> panicky FOMO doesn't take the day. But. but why would you get it for Epcot? Are you, are you just buying it for the essentially the individual lightning lane for Remy, Fast Track, and Frozen? Is that that's basically pretty much that? I mean, works. we're basically buying it to to pay for sleeping in, so we don't have to rope drop. Fair enough. I, I mean, ro- Epcot is like probably the worst park to rope drop, in my opinion, because a nothing's open. And yep. it's just everybody bustling for those three rides. And it's just yep. kind of like. And Test Track, what's very point? often, at least like our last time, it wasn't open during the early entry. So you really have everyone going to two things. <laughs> and it's. Right. And they just, even, you know, unless you're at the very front of the line, you might still have a 30 plus minute wait, even in that early entry time for this too. So. So you've got you've got a list here. I, I don't know why I'm interviewing you for your your, your topic <laughs> idea, but I guess whatever. Yeah, um, I just thought I'd, I'd I'd put in there just to share a little bit. I did ask the family again. You know what what are you most looking forward to? Because um, you know the more the more I ask, the more things I get out of them. It helps me kind of prioritize the schedule and make sure right. we get these things done. So my oldest uh, Olivia, she said she's looking forward to Tron and just the feeling of being at Disney. She just really likes being there and kind of she God. feels more at ease and stuff. Well, let me ask you a question. When does she start feel like all the kids always have like, oh, I remember this from when I was two or three mm-hmm. or whatever. But it seems like when it's like the feeling at be, like, of being at Disney, right? That's like a adult type feeling yeah. or at least a teenage feeling, right? Because it's recognizing nostalgia or at least maybe she doesn't have a name for it, but like right. that's the feeling, right? That's nostalgia biting her in the butt and be like, I love Disney. Yeah. When did that start at, at what age? I'm curious. So I think I've very much noticed it probably two to three years ago. So she's 14 and a half now. So maybe when she was like 12 ish, Mm. um, she's fairly introverted, has some anxiety and stuff like that. But when she's at Disney, it, she just seems more at ease. She's like, she talks to people more and stuff like that. She's just more outgoing and stuff. And I kind of noticed that like maybe two trips ago, two to three trips Mm -hmm. ago. So probably around that for age. Yeah, because like right now when I go to ask me, what would you like to do with the next Disney trip? The 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 kind of mimic like what they w- know I want to hear, or like, <laughs> just like simple things like oh this roller coaster, this roller coaster, this attraction, and they're not really like they're doing Uh-oh. it because it was fun. The I thought they're going to say to to mimic you to be like I want to smell Adventureland. And- <laughs> <laughs> well, no one puts uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on their on their on their list, but uh, my youngest does sometimes, depending on I guess the time of day, but. When I've at, we were out to dinner um, the other night and we were at a seafood place. So it's like, you know, the whole tablecloth is, uh, you know, a coloring book, essentially. Mm-hmm. So I drew a grid in true spreadsheet fashion against my, with my oldest uh, daughter, who's 10. And I guess here's Monday, Tuesday, or day one through six. You design your own, like, you know, Disney vacation. And, you know, she goes through like th- this park on this day and then this park on this day. And oh, we have hoppers. We could do this to this. And I'm like, <laughs> Why are you hopping from Animal Kingdom all the way to Epcot? That doesn't make any sense. And she's like, she's like starting to kind of understand like the logistics of it. Nice. But she's she's put, she always hears us talk about like the cadence of the trip and everything else like that. So she's starting to pick up on it. And I could just see some like glimmer of like I remember. I mean, it's only been since last December, but like there's a hook in it and, and whatever. And she just it's she's not exactly at the point where your daughter is where I just love the Disney bubble, like having a mature thought like that. Cause it's still just like candy and rides. That's the (laughs) only reason why I brought it up because I'm, I'm wanting to see when that kind of switch like happens, you know? Yeah. Um, Then I asked my son, Peter, he said the Tomorrowland speedway. 
and he wants he's looking forward to making a droid and getting a new magic band. I don't know why he thinks he's getting both, but he's <laughs> <laughs> they're both thousands of dollars. Yes. Why this speedway? That's an interesting he, one. And he's mentioned it a couple times now. He just I guess really likes that attraction and the drive and I think he just likes getting to drive. I don't know. <laughs> my my daughter doesn't like new experiences. She's very scared about doing things by herself for the like first time. And we threatened to put her on the speedway all by herself. She's now <laughs> tall enough to ride by right. herself. And last year, she didn't do it. But I put her in the driver's seat and I sat next to her. And I'm glad I didn't make her go by herself because she's if you're, she's about maybe an inch over it. But she mm-hmm. was her legs weren't long enough and strong enough to hold down right. the gas. Pedal. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. But this year, I'm like, you you go on or you. You know, you can't come back to the hotel. I mean, it's, this is this is you. You now live in Disney or Magic Kingdom <laughs> until, you, until you ride this. So, that's 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 interesting. Um, um, what about it's always else? one he's. It's always one that he's liked a lot, and usually, like when we're going around Magic Kingdom, it's like, well, what is okay? We've done a bunch of stuff. What else do people want to do? And he he would mention that. This seems to be the first trip that it's like the priority for him. So I'm not sure so what strange. changed. I've yeah. never heard that before, but yeah. good for him. That's awesome. Uh, then my youngest, Emma, she's looking forward to Space Mountain. She's the little Ooh. kind of thrill seeker in our family. And then she said, and making a droid and getting a new magic. Of course. Band. And I'm sure it's not just because I asked her right after I asked. No, <laughs> not at all. She's been thinking about this forever. Yeah. Uh, and then I asked my wife, Judy. Um, she said the behind the seeds tour and then the Space Mountain overlay at the party. She's really looking forward to at the Halloween party. What is the overlay? Is it just like it's kind of like lightning ish kind of a strobe effect? So what they do is it's the completely dark. There's no light, like not even in the tunnel or anything like that. It's hmm. just completely dark. And then they play like spooky noises and stuff like that. OK. Yeah. I'm trying Because I could have sworn I just saw a video where there, were, there was like some kind of strobe effect on the actual ride itself. Like you could see the tracks. OK. Play. I don't know. I, I, I thought I saw that on the Diz Unplugged preview yeah video. i, I mean maybe around. they have that but my understanding is it's just dark but i guess we'll, That's find, cool. out. Yep, we'll so, find out yep so those are just some last minute talks we've done a lot of packing and we have to finish up tomorrow we have a 9 a.m flight on sunday so it's it's definitely getting close we're getting uh really in the mood we've been uh, I, I ordered some extra neck fans to have because you know I fortunately i have been checking the weather and it looks like it, obviously it's still going to be hot we're still getting the uh afternoon thunderstorms pretty much every day but it looks like it's going to be you know 90 with the real feel of 95 not real feel of 115 and that's stuff good like that so it has to calm down just slightly so i'm glad to see that so the, the weather's been good here in maryland until today where i was out in my truck getting ready to throw some stuff away i was loading it up and all of a sudden my my whole body just started drenching <laughs> and i and i've been outside for the, like the last week and it's never been that hot but today just kind of snuck up on this so yeah. i am glad that you don't have the death heat that's yeah. been down in Orlando this summer. That's good. So that's what it is. Um, keep uh, keep an eye on our social media. I'll definitely be posting some stuff throughout the week, but especially, you know, assuming everything works out for the preview of Journey of Water on Friday. Yep. Uh, and then when you get back, we'll do a full-blown trip report as we normally do. Looking forward to that. I always love those, those trip reports. Now, uh, what I wanted to talk about, like I've been on vacation since a week ago. Right, we got back yesterday, mm-hmm. so it was like Friday to Thursday, and we went on this vacation literally the same week last year. And it's just big, it was it's it's like a normal campground, right? We have friends that uh, do uh, RVs. We got a cabin, and it's a great little place uh, in Rehoboth Beach or south of it. And there's a pool with a swim up bar. There's a family pool that's where the kids can run around. And there's a bay where there's a beach, and the kids can kind of play in the sand. But basically, my son. Um, and daughter go play with their kids and they're like gone for eight hours in the day and they're just riding their bikes playing in the, in the it's, it's great right and the adults can do whatever the adults want to do and it is a pure vacation because yep. you kind of wake up whenever you wake up which is around eh, it was around, right around eight o'clock every day and then you go get your coffee you read the news you do whatever you do when you drink coffee in the morning and then you kind of figure out what you want to do for the day and just go to the pool and then what are we eating for dinner? So you were having those conversations at one o'clock. Everything's great. And, you know, last year, I didn't think about this being a relaxing vacation. It was just a fun vacation because we had the December trip already planned for last year. And so here I am this year. We've been talking about the vacation and the vacation for six, seven months now at this point. And I started thinking about the last couple of days. I'm like, huh. 
is it possible to really do have a vacation and a vacation at Walt Disney World, right? Because in I, I can't imagine being at Disney World with kids and then just kind of waking up at a random time and then meandering around for coffee and just sitting on my phone and quiet, letting the kids do whatever they want to do and then figure out, hey, let's go to the Magic Kingdom today. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because there's always got to be a schedule. It's very expensive. You just don't... <sighs> It's very. I, I want to say let's take the money out of this conversation, but you can't. You right? can't it's, really. It's it's right there. So, is it possible to have a vacation in the vacation at Walt Disney World? And I, I mean, I think it. I think there is, but it's not a real vacation in the vacation, right? That I mean, I, I'm coming to the point where, you know, you could still say, all right, we're going to take a full day off and hang out, which is good, but. Can you can you really can you really relax and have that like multi days where you kind of just lose yourself? It's a different kind of feeling. I'm I'm suspect. I was able to shut my brain off and just have a nice lazy day with the family, having fun. But Disney World's just different, and I don't know at this point because we're gonna we're gonna attempt to do it this time. We have a full day off as a rest day. We're not gonna go in the parks as long uh, on our next trip, and I don't know if the vacation is gonna feel as relaxing or as vacation -y in between. So yeah. is capturing a few hours of relaxation, the vacation and the vacation, does that help you um, overall throughout the week? So these are questions I've, I don't have any answers, but this is what has been on my vac yeah. this is what vacation brain. This is what's been on my, my Disney brain for most of the week. And um, let, let me turn this around to you, Phil, and ask you, what do you, what would you consider a vacation in the vacation at Disney World versus a normal vacation? Because, yeah. like we mentioned last week, you were away um, in a nice kind of relaxing, hanging out type of vacation yeah. as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess two thoughts. One is to do like that vacation within the vacation where you're taking that day off or mornings off or something like that it kind of gives, it, it's almost not really a vacation. It's just recharging a little bit yeah. Um, from all like the, kind of the crazy longer days. Um, I mean, sleeping in them, not, you know, having the rope drop or whatever is definitely nice. Um, but you're still also like, if say you have that one totally off day, you're still also thinking like, okay, well, I, there's all these things I want to fit in this one off day that isn't the parks. Like I still want to kind of use my time that in Florida or whatever. The only way I could think about maybe having more of that real taking it easy vibe would be if you did like a really long trip. Like I seen some Facebook groups, people come over from like, you know, England or whatever, and they're here for like three weeks, or even if you had like 10 days, two weeks or something like that. And you had like one of those really long tickets that, you know, those last five days that you added on mm -hmm. didn't really cost you that much. Then maybe you could have that attitude of, what do you guys want to do today? You want to go to the magic kingdom? All right. If we don't get a lot accomplished, who cares? It's kind of like a bonus day. Like, I think that's the only way to do it. And, but even then you'd still want to get, it's still not going to be the same as like just being off in a cabin or something like that. I mean, like th th this is kind of, I mean, I'm remembering our trip from December and our trip from our adult only trip last summer. And there's two instances where it was like we took a break from the parks, but we didn't do it, take a break from doing things. So right, like exactly. For our adult trip, we did a monorail like a uh, crawl. Essentially, we had lunch at Steakhouse 71. Then we went over to the Polynesian and, and waited a couple hours to get into Trader Sam's. And then we went over to the Grand Floridian and kind of walked around. And then but we always had this like, oh, we got to get to the Magic Kingdom at like six o'clock. So, you know, even though we weren't at the where we weren't at the parks, we were either still waiting for something to happen or we were just basically going from place to place and we weren't really relaxing, but there was other things to do. So when I look back on that day, it still was a blur of like here, 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 even though we sat down for three hours at the Polynesian and just kind of relaxed, which was nice, yeah. but it was always in the anticipation of waiting. It's right. almost like scheduled relaxation. Or yeah, something. which 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 when I when I think back on it, it doesn't really help. I think because I'll look back at my vacation last week. There's plenty of times we we're just sitting around at dusk, you know, having a beer and kind of just like whatever. But we were hanging out at the Polynesian, having a cocktail. It wasn't like 
this is where I'm going to be for the rest of the day. I have other things that we have to kind of do. Right. And that kind of messed it up. The only time I felt true relaxation was the one night with the family where we got done with Animal Kingdom at like, it was kind of late. It was like five or six o'clock, but we went back to the resort and we hung out for like four or five hours at the pool. Right. We didn't have anything left to do for the day. We weren't, you know, I didn't have to stack, you know, lightning lanes. I didn't have to plan. I didn't have to keep looking at the clock to like say, okay, our dinner reservation is in three hours. You know, how long does it take to get dressed and go out? Right. It was. So I think the key, and we're going to move on to the next topic after this, because <laughs> I think we're, we're killing this one. I think the key in, in my mind is you have to either um, take a full day off and not have any plans other than, you know, go to Disney Springs and just hang out type of stuff or go to one resort and hang out. Right. Or basically end your park day early. So take the evening off. Cause I don't think you can find a vacation in a vacation when you take a morning off. Yes. Yeah. You might get a couple extra hours of sleep. Like you said, recharge. That's a great, yeah. re- that's a great thing to recharge. I was going to say, that's, those that's not necessarily a bad thing. You probably still know, <laughs> but it's not the full vacation of the vacation. I, I, I think you need to find a way, whatever your way is to slow down the day and have nothing in front of you until tomorrow and have a chance to just like stop. Right. And I, I don't think you could do that in the park uh, if, unless you're by yourself or with a significant other and you can just kind of chill without anything to do um, or let the kids run around and be like, OK, we've got the rest of the day. It's three o'clock where you can do whatever. I think that's what you need to do, because I think what that does is gives a nice space inside your vacation or your Disney World trip, maybe not a vacation, but to like think about what you've done, think about what's coming up, and give it some space to breathe. Because typically, when we do our trip reports, is Monday we did this, Tuesday we did this, Thursday yeah. we did this, Friday we did this, and then we went home, and you had nowhere, you didn't stop to breathe at any point. Anyway, um, I'm just thinking about that because we both just had vacations. We've got hopefully, I have a Disney trip later on this year, so thinking about different ways to do that and not feeling depressed that I'm not doing something the day yeah. that I'm relaxing, right? So you have to fight that. <laughs> um, I also wanted to briefly touch on um, one other topic that was announced. Maybe well, we can kind of do maybe a little bit deeper dive of who this gentleman is, but it was announced that David Duffy is promoted or became the VP of live entertainment in Walt Disney World, formerly had a similar role in Disneyland Paris. Um, and typically... You know, you, you see on Diz Twitter or Diz X or any of the forums like, oh, this is this guy's terrible. He's awful. Or this just always oh, failing upwards, like all the normal crud that gets, you know, thrown out there. He, he was almost no negative feedback and everybody kind of like clapped at this. And I'm like, I'm looking around. It's like the normal <laughs> cynical people are like, oh, this is great. You know, I'm like, wait a minute. Who are these people? What's going on here? So I just want to point out that there are still good things people are cheering about at um, inside of Imagineering or Walt Disney World or just the parks in general. Um, whether this anything good comes out of this, um, I can't imagine anything bad will come out of this. So we'll see. I just want to make a point that there was a glimmer of like old school online, like Disney discussion about somebody coming in and like, oh, maybe he'll be great. give somebody the benefit of the doubt for yeah. once, which doesn't happen very often. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. So um, go check out what he's done of Disneyland Paris. His name is David Duffy. I think there was announcements. Was it on Disney Parks blog? Really? I think so. Was? Yeah. I and uh, they give a nice bio yeah. about him and kind of what he's done. So take a look at what Disneyland Paris. And basically, he's been lauded because he was in charge of their anniversary party. Um, and it was – I kept – we were all jealous as that was yeah. going on because they were doing – It was way better than the 50th at Walt Disney World. So. Yeah. So um, and the, good things and I, I must admit my first thought was at Disneyland Paris, they use drones in the show. Yes. So I didn't know if he might bring some of those drones with him. It'd be great. Uh, there might be other reasons why they're not able to do the drones here or whatever, but he's familiar with, with shows like that, that kind of have more elements to them. So hopefully we see some of that coming at new, new entertainment at Disney world. hundred percent. You, you might get the people, um, uh, the whatchamacallits at, uh, Hollywood studios, which would be great. Yep. Um, why can't I, always, I can never remember their name. Help me out. The, um, 
You mean in Star Wars, like the X-Wings and stuff? Or? No, right right in the entrance. Uh, in oh, like the Citizens Hollywood. of Hollywood? Thank you. Yes, <laughs> Citizens of Hollywood. I couldn't remember. All right, let's go on. I've been babbling enough with yeah. my, my topics. My I need to get recharged for my vacation here. Yeah. Um, our first kind of, we're not doing a game, but we're going to take a s- game segment or activity segment to talk about our first thoughts about Ahsoka. Um, I actually sat down and watched both of these on what they come out Wednesday night, right? At nine so they, they, it was coming at the normally it was supposed to be released on Wednesday. And in the past, they released them at I think it was midnight Pacific time. So 3 a.m. Eastern time. They decided to bump it up. And so it came out 9 p.m. Tuesday, the 27th. So uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time, right. 6 p.m. Western time. Uh, so. It's kind of that was one thing I wanted to touch on. We could get to that later, but just how that, why they did, why we think they did that, and how did that impact our, our kind of our experience with with watching it. So you want to start there? Sure. Yeah. I mean, because like you mentioned, you watched it that evening. We watched it right at you know it was probably nine oh five or something that we turned it on by the time we got all settled and stuff like that. And I thought it was, it was just kind of a neat experience that pretty much everyone not everyone obviously, but you know, a larger community Mm -hmm. online and stuff like that was kind of watching it and experiencing it at the same time. And then you can start seeing comments from people online and things like that. So I I like that better than, you know, in the past, you, you always joke that I I was watching it at you know six in the morning when, as soon as I wake up and then I'm watching the breakdown videos before you're even out of bed. Um, So I, I, I thought it was a nice idea to move it to that time slot does probably give a little bit more pressure. Like, well, I guess I got to watch it then because people are going to start talking about it versus, well, I'll get to it when I get to it the next day. Um, so that might be a negative aspect to it. But overall, I think it was a, a nice move. And I know other no. other streaming services already have been doing that. No, I mean, I think, I mean, it, content has been coming out at, you know, appointment TV for decades, right? It's, you know. Right new episodes of whatever a certain night it airs. I always thought it was weird that they just kind of dumped it like, you know, midnight in California and then just like, all right, everybody can watch it whenever they want. And then you would have to ignore the internet basically yeah. the whole day until you got to see it, which was never fun. So making it come out at nine or six on the West coast, I think is good because then you could have a moment where I might, you know, let's say it comes out at, you know, 9 p.m. like it did. I might maybe I'm not watching until midnight or 11 o'clock that night or maybe, you know, whatever. But if you're watching it at the same time or roughly the same time, you can just start seeing the reactions online and be part of that excitement. Um, Hopefully if it's a a good show. So I I think it's good. Why they chose to do this, I don't know. Maybe they actually got smart with their releases in Disney Plus rather than just kind of being. Yeah, I I definitely saw a lot of advertisement and different types of advertisement. So hopefully that's other good sign that maybe Disney PR and marketing is getting a hang of like getting things out there. So it seems like they're putting a lot of eggs in a basket. Maybe with this one, they really wanted it to succeed and be a thing you know, kind of a, be a reason people would subscribe to Disney plus. Sure. So maybe that's why, like you said, making it appointment television. All right. So, um, we got a good time. what do you think about them dropping two episodes versus one? I thought it based, based on what the two episodes were, I thought it made a lot of sense. It got people more invested in learning about these characters. It kind of brought people back up to speed with where the last season of rebels ended. Uh, with the the epilogue. Um, And so I thought it made a lot of sense. I think the first episode, obviously, so, I mean, I guess we'll get into spoilers, but it kind of uh, ended up what could have been a cliffhanger. Um, But then obviously you had the second episode, you got kind of went right in there. You didn't have to worry about it or think about it. Um, I thought it's good to air, whether it's two episodes, three episodes, these are also fairly long. I think the first episode was like 56 minutes and the second one was like 42. So you basically had, you know, even taking out credits, a good like hour and a half of content or so, hour, 20 minutes. Um, So I thought that was like, it really was enough to kind of get, get some meat on the bones and kind of get a feel for really what it is and get people who maybe aren't familiar with these characters more in, in embedded with them. Yeah. So let's just go right into it then, because we're already talking about hinting around different things. Well, well, first of all, what was your overall thought, right? I'm more of the preachy kind of um, go on a tirade about Star Wars these days. You're (laughs) you're a little bit more forgiving or at least less animated about it than I am. So what, and and you're, you're a bigger fan of the cartoons than I am. I've never really finished rebels. I've only watched like the highlights and, and stuff like that over the years. So what were your initial, initial takes? 
So my initial take was I really liked it. I thought the the cinematography of it, like I, th- I thought it just looked really good and it mm-hmm. looked kind of like the same world that Rebels took place in. Um, you know, it wasn't like Mandalorian, which kind of is it's dark and stuff like that. This kind of had like pops of color to it. I thought the music was really good. Um, I thought the actress who's playing Sabine was really good. That character, I think, is is almost like co-starring in it with it. You know, it's called Ahsoka, yeah. but it's almost as much about Sabine as it is Ahsoka. Um, and I thought she really nailed that character and, and their relationship's really interesting. Definitely a lot of little Easter eggs to Rebels fans. Um, and I know we'll definitely get into this, but I, don't, I think they introduced the characters pretty well without going you know, boring people too much with, you know, they, they're not going to recap four seasons of another show in like one mm. episode. So they kind of let you know who the characters were, but um, you didn't have to know, like, you know, some of the other side characters that, that were in rebels. They didn't mention that you didn't have to know that to enjoy, you know, the, who they were and understand the plot and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my, my initial takes were like, I love the pacing of everything. Mm-hmm. It was basically the opposite of Secret Invasion, where Secret Invasion looked like it was happening in an apartment building somewhere, yeah. and there was no like global or galactic impact with everything. Ahsoka felt like it was well paced. You, they were in lived in worlds or lived in spaces. It didn't feel like kind of like um, some of like the Boba Fett stuff, or it was kind of just kind of fake. Or you weren't asking questions. Why did they do this? Why couldn't you just do that? Right. Yeah. And the, the only thing that was just kind of ridiculous was the point where um, Sabine lost the map because she got attacked. She's like, I'm just going to take it, even though she said not to. I mean, I think I, I think if they could have found another way for her to, like, ignore Ahsoka or disregard her advice and whatever without putting something that's, like, special. Like, obviously, you, you couldn't have the rest of the pro show with, like, yeah. with that, but I think they could have figured out something else. That's the only thing I had a problem with, and that's really nitpicky because I didn't really have a problem with it. It was just, like, made me go, huh, that was a little weird. But, um, yeah. no, I, I think I think the character's good. You also mentioned about, like, knowledge of, like, Rebels, and I, I certainly know the characters, but I'm not, like, uber familiar with them. Um, the, the show has to be very careful about adding another layer – of characters that are quote unquote well known, and because now you're layering them on top of the greater Star Wars lore that the vast majority of people are familiar with, yeah. right? So, um, oh, the name excuse me the um, the the captain of the ship that's now a general, um, oh, General Harrison Dula, yeah, and like she didn't really feel blended in. She she, she almost looked fake almost in a lot of her scenes because. She didn't look like a general. She just had still had like her pirate uh, pilot gear on and, and yeah. everything else like that. So she kind of stood out to me a little bit. Um, but one of the things I really, really liked, and this is one of the first things I think I commented either on Discord or to you, was I love the portrayal of mysticism yeah. in this show. Right. So you're pulling, you know, the witches into it. You're pulling some previous Je- po- um, Jedi that are no longer Jedi and talking about Thrawn being thrown into um, another galaxy, right? We've never mm-hmm. talked about this, right? So uh, in Star Wars, it's always been the galaxy and the unknown regions, right? So that could be like the black box they could pull dangerous things from. Yep. But now we've got this other galaxy, which, you know, things could happen from. And um, what one of the things I want to get your take on is what do you think about it being another galaxy versus, you know, just some random stuff in the unknown region? So I thought that was really interesting that they did that because there's been so much speculation that, you know, Thrawn and Ezra were taken to the unknown region, which is where Thrawn's people were. And so everyone's almost like speculating about how that's going to be and how is that all Mm. interaction? And they didn't go that direction. So I think it threw everyone for a loop in a good way. You know, it wasn't something they anticipated that they're going to a completely different galaxy. And, you know, there have been in the the novelizations and stuff, characters and, and, and races that have come from other galaxies. So whether they introduce those or something new, who knows? But it is something brand new. And it kind of gives just a lot of even beyond this show will give a lot of uh, creative people fun things to play with now with going to a new galaxy. So I thought that was really interesting. And also that they mentioned, you know, not just another place but they mentioned time and space so who knows getting to that galaxy might involve a little time travel or who knows um but i think it really opens the door to so a lot of cool new stuff 
So we all know where the trajectory of Ahsoka and all the other Disney Plus shows are leading to a movie and a culmination of all this stuff, right? Yeah. They're going to kind of blend everything together. It's going to be a great ride, but we're still uh, – Filoni is going to try his darndest to kind of answer all the questions about the sequel trilogy, which I think is going to be a waste of time anyway. <laughs> Um, what I really like about this other galaxy and then explaining hyper, um, you know, faster than light travel and hyperspace by having to like use the four. I mean, this is kind of getting into the nerd stuff that's yeah. not really explained in the show, but like they're the Pergil and it's, you need a, a Jedi to navigate and all this other stuff, all this, like, you know, you have to use the force to do technology things. Right. Yeah. So my hope, and I've been thinking about this for the last couple of days is we have this wonderful Ahsoka story, um, and then it leads to Thrawn, and there's a battle, and then he gets all forgotten, and the First Order comes up out of that, whatever that might be, right? So we lead to that whole thing. But we have, once this is all done, the story is told, because we know how it ends at this point. This other galaxy allows us to kind of trash the old galaxy, right? So we don't have to, like... It's been it's three thousand years be- before the Battle of Yavin, or it's th- four thousand years, whatever. Like we're just picking a random amount of time after the movies to kind of clean the slate. Now we don't have to do that. We could start a whole new story, a whole new galaxy that has all new rules and people and governments and whatever, and still have the Star Wars universe, which is basically the Force, right? Mm-hmm. So I-, I think that might be a clever way of being able to kind of. We set things and tell yep. interesting stories that don't have the weight of 40 right. years of mm-hmm. terrible interlocking storytelling. Like Star Wars is great with great storytelling that's very like isolated from other elements of good storytelling. Like they haven't bridged it, but I think that might give them a way to kind of talk about stuff. So I hope that's the way that things are going. Um, what are some of you – I've seen takes. Like um, we like watching Screen Crush on YouTube. Yeah. Shout out to them. Um, they put out a video, was Ahsoka bad, question mark? And, of course, it's a clickbait title. And it goes, of yeah. course it's not bad, blah, 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 blah. But have you seen any negative takes so, about on Ahsoka? And, and this kind of gets the the one point I wanted to make sure we wanted to cover was saying, do you have to be knowledgeable of Rebels and Clone Wars and the novelizations and stuff like that to fully enjoy this show? And that's what that video you referenced got into. And one thing I found interesting is I've spoken to a few people who didn't watch Rebels, and there's a mm-hmm. couple people on our Discord server as well that didn't watch Rebels and watch the show, and they all enjoyed it because they it's almost like they don't know what they don't know. So it's like, yeah, these are all new characters, and I'm getting to to meet them, and I don't know all their backstory, and that doesn't really take away from my enjoyment. You know, you mentioned the, you know, uh, was it Morgan Elsbeth is a night sister of Dathomir? It's like they don't know what that means. They haven't seen that, but they know she's a witch using powers. And okay, cool. Let's like you know. So it's funny that the only people I've seen worried about this are Rebels fans. Yeah, because you, know, you know. So that's what that whole story is like. Well, you know, I'm really into Rebels, so I really liked it. But I'm worried that people who don't like it, don't know Rebels, won't like it. It's like, well, rather than like projecting that worry and worrying about people that might not like it, like talk to those people or like, let's, let's hear about those people. And so far, everyone I've spoken to still really enjoys it. It hasn't detracted from them just because they don't know that Ryder as Zadi was the governor back in the day. Like they just saw him there now as a governor, yeah, that's you know, like, you, yeah. like, like things like that, you know, um, it's all fine. So, so far so good. I think it's been very successful at working at both levels, whether you're knowledgeable or not. I mean, I think you probably need to have some of the basics idea, you know, know who Ahsoka is and stuff like that. But beyond that, I think you can kind of enjoy it at different levels. Uh, the only thing that I can see frustrating people as they get to know Ahsoka more and more. Let's say somebody never watched any of the cartoons, right? Mm-hmm. They just they're just movie and Disney Plus people um, at this point. Um, maybe they tried watching the Clone Wars and Ahsoka is the first character, and you know wasn't a very good character initially. That type of thing. Um, I, the 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 issue is is to become to love her in live action because she is a great character. The a, actress is extremely um, good at what she's doing with this character, bringing it to the screen. Uh, the story is going to be very good because Filoni is going to write a decent story with it. Um, my my issue is okay. I love Ahsoka. I want to go learn more about her, and then they go down the rabbit hole of 
oh, she was the Padawan of Darth Vader. How come we've never heard of her before? Oh, she was in Rebels. She was Fulcrum. She was, you know, helping put people together. Where did she go? Why is all this stuff? Like, oh, Thrawn's a big bad guy. Oh, right. They mentioned him in, you know, the previous uh, season of Mandalorian. It's just like you kind of put these things and she was first shown in Mandalorian um, years ago. This, I mean, like they start putting these things together and then once you do the Wikipedia deep dive or they start watching things up, they're going to start asking questions that there's no good answers to, which is, I think, a little frustrating. I think that's the only bad thing that can come out of this. But yeah. then maybe that's good because now they've just consumed a whole bunch of Star Wars content and Disney Plus got some extra subs out of it. I don't know, right? <laughs> And some of those questions, even the people that have been watching all this and read all the books and stuff, they still have those questions too. And I think we're all hoping some of those questions maybe get answered during the show. But no, I, I guess don't we'll find think out. So. I, I, I'm not. I'm not putting up hope. Hope. For that. <laughs> I think. I think. I think it's just gonna, you know, come to. Uh, the, the the one interesting thing, and this is not an Ahsoka episode. We got to move on to the for the next thing. But the only thing I'll, I'll leave this out here is um, I'm going to ask you this now, having seen two episodes. Do we find out what happens to Ezra um, at all by the end of this series? I think we do. I don't think he's going to be like a major character that he's back, you know, by next episode or anything like that. He'll probably be just in the last couple of episodes and just for a little bit. Um, but I do think we find out what happened. Okay. Does that gonna, is that going to be important or is, is like his character like – Oh, he died or he started a family or something. I think he'll be important because I think all about like what you talked about earlier about how the force is connected to hyperspace travel. And if anybody wants to read more about that, they, the, in the, where the Chiss, where Thrawn was from, the people that navigated there used the force to do it and stuff like that. So I think because he's a very force sensitive and connect, he can connect to the Pergil and stuff like that. Um, I think he will be an important character, um, but maybe more in future series than in this one. Okay. I, I kind of think you're right on that, so I, I, I tend to agree. So make sure if you haven't watched Ahsoka, uh, we just spoiled it for you, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but go ahead and check it out. It, it's still a really, really fun ride, really well done. Um, you want to do – we've got about 15 minutes or so, Phil. So we're going to – let's let's think about this. So we have the Rank the Disney Sea expansion attractions. We can do mm-hmm. that. We can save that for another time because uh, probably two weeks from now when your trip report episode is mm-hmm. done. Or do we go to the DVC engagement puzzle that we've just been talking about for a couple episodes <laughs> and never got to? What do you think we should get? We should go Why to don't we do that puzzle? Because um, then maybe in the next couple of weeks, a little bit more will come out about those attractions and we can get into that in a little bit more detail. Okay. Why don't we do the puzzle since we've been teasing it for a while and we'll... Uh... We'll I don't cover even that. remember what this is at this point. <laughs> um, okay, so our DV, we'll, we'll go through we'll go through it this way. Um, um, so a couple of weeks ago, we were talking. Somebody brought up, um, you know, different touring things. I forget what the actual DPC engagement question was at this <laughs> way because it was like four weeks ago. Um, but uh, somebody mentioned that somebody had gone to Disney World from Canada for. What was it? A month at oh, this a point. A month. Yep, a month. And they had a broken down that they could. They did it for less than their budget was ten thousand dollars. So their breakdown. They got a house. So their breakdown was fifty five hundred dollars for the house for the month, which I could kind of see. You could probably. Oh yeah, we've stayed off property easily. and stuff like that. There's definitely stuff available in that price range. I mean, even you do a townhouse, probably even a little less. So that's definitely doable. Um, and this was for how many people were in this one? Do you recall off the top? Yeah, I think it was four. It was at least four. Yeah, I think four. I think it was two adults, uh, two kids. Yep. So they have down here $1,300 for passes, which I, I don't know what it, the, in parentheses it says $4,000 divided by three for the three trips. I guess they divide, they had three Disney trips that year and they. Right. So they only counted three. Part, but still seems cheap because they're only paying $1,000 a pass per person, yeah. right? Which still seems light, but maybe there's some deal they got in Canada. I don't know. I don't know. If they, I think APs are just APs when you're out of state yeah. at $1,400 a pop there. $800 in gas, which I guess you could spend $800 in gas. I don't know if they drove all the way down from Canada or not. Um, they I believe they zero- did. And so that's why they had their car. They didn't need to rent a car and stuff. I believe they yep. did drive So the, they also had zero. They stayed at um, the Swan for some time, but these Marriott, uh, Marriott points, so $0. 
Um, Seven hundred dollars for the Kennedy Space Center and Typhoon Lagoon. Sure, that, that can I can see them spending money on that some touristy stuff, and sixty dollars in tolls. So, oh, and also a thousand dollars for restaurants. So, what I thought was interesting was the passes does yeah. not come up with anything, and no money here on food whatsoever. Well, the thousand dollars for restaurants, but that's it. I don't. But see for a you, month, yeah, for a month, I don't see how that's ten meals. Yeah. So is it, Phil, do you think this is possible? What do you think is missing? So I, we were trying to speculate on this. One thing I was thinking was perhaps because they called it restaurant, there may have been plenty of groceries for cooking in the house. They didn't count that money because they figured they would do that at home anyway they would need to eat. So just because mm. they were eating in Florida versus cooking dinner in Canada – they didn't count that as part of the budget for this trip because that's part of their normal grocery budget. That makes sense. Um, now the passes here, it was this, uh, maybe we have to go back. If this was for like two people, maybe that makes sense. But you also got to realize their, their budget was, I'm going to do this math real quick. Uh, these said they're, they spent um, $9,400, but Canadian. That's approximately sixty nine hundred dollars USD, seven grand, and I could spend seven thousand dollars in a week at Walt Disney. I World. think we pretty much, we, including flights, we're pro- we probably are spending seven thousand yeah. for our week. But I drive down and I'm still paying six to seven thousand with food and you know souvenirs and stuff like that. So I do not know how they got tickets for this. I could I I could see the houses. I can believe the food. If they only sparingly went to restaurants, I could see them spending eight hundred dollars in gas, get their cars up and down. Maybe they had a couple of days at a Marriott, the Swan, seven hundred dollars to get passes for Typhoon Lagoon or Kennedy Space Center. That's reasonable, right? Um, it's I don't know how they did the passes, and I, and yeah. I and I and I'm very very confused. How much do you think it would cost you to spend? a month down in Orlando to go to Disney world. Because yeah. all I'm thinking right now is you got to do the annual pass. That's $1,400 a head. Yeah. Times your family is seven grand. Yeah. And then seven. if I'm doing a month, am I just doing Disney or am I going to get universal passes? Well, let's say something? you're just doing Disney. Okay. Right? You're so by, you're off site. Yeah. So I could see, I don't know, twelve hundred dollars a week at a house somewhere, roughly. Yeah. Yep. So that's that's another let's say five weeks. That's another six grand. So we're at thirteen thousand dollars US. Yeah. Um, let's be extremely conservative. You never eat food anywhere else and you're making peanut butter jelly sandwiches. <laughs> you're spending maybe two hundred dollars a week on food if it's all groceries and you're like boxes of mac and cheese, white bread, yeah. everything else. I mean, so I'm trying to think if I go to the grocery store now, it's you know, one fifty to two hundred dollars, just a normal grocery store trip, right? So let's say three hundred dollars because you're on vacation, you're splurging. So that's another fifteen hundred dollars. So we're at like what, almost fifteen thousand bucks at this point, yeah. and we haven't gotten to Disney or haven't gotten to Florida in any way. So I, I think you're spending probably realistically twenty thousand dollars to do a month at Disney World with all the passes and an offsite thing, and then parking and miscellaneous and very very inexpensive food yeah i don't know how you get a month at disney at sixty nine hundred dollars yeah i don't know (laughs) i'm lost and uh, so if anybody out there understands how you can get cheap tickets at disney world for a month and you're you're these this lady said passes so it's not like tickets she didn't get ticket books or a ticket package she got yeah i mean i think that's the big thing was if we say okay they only spent a thousand dollars out at restaurants although if it's four people that's me. What five meals maybe at restaurants well, and they're cooking everything sure? else. I mean, it's really just the passes. I guess everything else is kind of doable. Um, oh, yeah. Wait, wait. Is she just going to like some small amusement park somewhere and just saying she's staying near Disney World? This has nothing to do with going to the Magic <laughs> Kingdom, and it's just like you know, coin up at the mall somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. So. Let, let me uh, let's let's put this out there for the DBC engagement. We asked this, um, I know, a couple months ago, like duration of trips. Let's say you had to go and spend a month at Disney World. What would your realistic budget look like 
um, for either by yourself, you and a significant under, other, or um, you and your family, let's say whoever many people are in your family, right? So you're, you're going for a month and you can what, whatever. And this has to be a realistic budget. So like, I just gave myself $50,000 to spend in a month. Let's say you're trying to do it as a, I don't know, middle-class family. I don't even know if that's possible as a middle-class family. <laughs> that's somebody's like earnings for like half a year or something. Um, all right. So let, let's, let's put that one to bed. I'm still quite surprised about this one. All right, so I want to review uh, uh, DBC engagement from two weeks ago that we had put out there. It says, what holiday would you ra- would you have a party for if Disney wanted to create another party season? You got to name the this what park you want to go to, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody agreed um, that it was a springtime festival. Um, a lot of people said Easter, but I don't think you could do Easter because we're not. Uh, Disney doesn't like to do specific religious holidays, but it could be a spring festival with an egg hunt. And um, everybody had it at the Magic Kingdom. Is this would this be your go to? Because this would not be my go to. Yeah, well, I definitely think something in the springtime makes the most sense. Um, whether you do it at Magic Kingdom or Epcot or something, I guess could be debated. But I think that would be you know that's a season not really covered right now, other than you know spring break. There are a lot of various holidays, so you could do like you know do like a parade that covers all those different, you know, whether it's St. Patrick's day or Easter or something like that, where it has different floats within them. Um, so I do think that's the time of year to do it. Um, I don't know. I'm interested in your take there. So you can't do it at magic kingdom. There's too okay. many parties already at magic kingdom that limit people's time in that park. So I'm not here for another magic kingdom. I limiting the days people can watch happily ever after. What I think you do is you do a springtime, uh, festival party at Animal Kingdom. Hmm. It starts at night. And it'll be like a, um, you know, some kind of like celebration of animals coming out of hibernation, or it's the you know the circle of life, and there's babies, and it's you know that type of thing. You could tie in the Lion King, obviously, with all that type of stuff. But you know, spring, um, you know, is you know about renewing life and everything else like that. And I think that kind of goes well with the animal kingdom kind of theme about, you know, life and conserving it, that type of thing. And, it ties and the part- into, uh, sorry, I was going to say earth day is in April, which is also when animal kingdoms like anniversary is. So you can kind of sure. tie that into it too. So, I mean, I, I think, I think you just have some nighttime offerings. Um, they do a, little, a really good job with all like the puppets and stuff like that during the winter time and stuff like that. I think they can expand on that. They don't have to do a crazy loud, like song jamming, you know, parade. But I think if they can have like celebrate it differently in each of the types of parks, like they do in those, you know, in Asia or Africa or anything else like that, or whatever happens in the Dino Land area <laughs> that we'll hopefully find out in a, in a month or so. I think that might get a good offer because I think people are hankering for something fun in Animal Kingdom at night. And um, as long as I think you provide good food and some entertainment, people will come in and kind of hang out in Pandora at night and check that out. So that, that would be, that would be my take. I like that idea. I mean, we're all pining for them just to have more things in animal kingdom so they can keep the park open later. This might be a way for them to kind of ease into that, not just extend the park hours, but have some, some parties in the evening there. Yep. So, okay, we're going to, we're going to end this here, Phil, unless we need to hit up anything else. Did I forget anything? I think we're good. I think we're good. Yes. So remember the DBC engagement question for this week is how would you budget for a month down at Disney World? Uh, Give me some cool ideas on how to do it inexpensively, right? This is not an extravagant trip. This is like you're trying to survive at Disney World for a month with your family. Um, And then we're going to have some cool stuff following that with more like hip tips and trick type of engagement questions. Uh, But get ready for Phil's trip report. We're going to see how much he actually got done at Magic Kingdom without, <laughs> without Genie Plus, Plus or find out that he actually broke down and bought it in the morning. Um, and we will, I, I think, I think other than just a normal trip report, I think we want to hear about the vacation, the vacation, because you yep. are attempting to slow down at least a little bit, a little bit on this trip. 
So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Um, that being said, thank you everybody for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment for us and say hello. Um, if you're listening or anybody else out there, hop into Discord, say hello. We've been getting a lot of new folks coming during the community, so we do appreciate your uh, engagement with that. Uh, trip. Uh, it's a trip. Phil, have a great trip. <laughs> Safe travels. We can't wait to hear what you're doing and some pictures about the journey of water, which are going to be really awesome. Please don't tear down any of the walls as you're waiting online <laughs> to get there. Patience, patience, patience. Um, there's some really cool explanations out there also from Blog Mickey, I think, had a pretty good one where they kind of described mm-hmm. what they saw without any pictures. So if you want to uh, find that, head over to Blog Mickey, read up on that, and then quiz Phil and see if he was able to get through everything. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening, watching, and we'll catch you next week. Take care.